Welcome to our lecture online and our next topic here is the van der Waals equation and what that really is it's the realistic or the more realistic equation of the PV equals NRT equation which is what we know as the ideal gas equation. So what we're doing there is first of all in the van der Waals equation we're adjusting for the pressure change due to the presence of the molecules and there's these electrical force interactions between the molecules which changes the effective pressure and secondly the fact that the molecules actually take up some volume which is somewhat significant when the when the density is really high so that the uh, space taken up by the molecules becomes significant compared to the volume available to the gas molecules then we have to put in an adjustment factor as well all right so first of all let's take a look at the adjustment factor for the volume uh, what we can say is that uh, let's say this is the uh, the volume of a molecule and then how much space does that molecule take up now initially we say well simply whatever the volume of the molecule is but that's not entirely correct because notice that the closest that two molecules can get to each other is this close which means that this region right here becomes an occupied region by the first molecule and the center mass of the second molecule cannot get any closer than that region right there which means that the effective volume that a single molecule take up, takes up actually has two times the radius of a single molecule and let me go ahead and write uh, a big R like that so it's easier to see so each molecule takes up this much volume so we can say that the volume taken up by a single molecule is equal to 4 thirds pi times 2 times the radius of each molecule cubed which is the same as you know 2 cubed is 8 8 times the volume of a single molecule pi uh, r cubed like that okay now of course the volume taken up by n molecules well that is equal to n times 8 times 4 thirds pi r cubed and then finally when we say well the number of molecules let's say that it's equal to Avogadro's number we can then say that v sub n uh, is equal to Avogadro's number and that's all I'll write v sub n sub a indicating Avogadro's number for one mole of molecules is n times 8 times 4 thirds pi r cubed uh, yeah pi r cubed should go up here very good and oh wow I make all kinds of interesting mistakes here now next uh, how do we make this look like that now first of all we can say that this whole thing right here is equal to the uh, constant B so B now represents the volume taken up by Avogadro's number of molecules within a container of gas and then of course if we have n moles of that gas we can say that V as a function of the number of moles is simply equal to n times B and that is where this factor came from now why is it minus well what that means is that the effective volume available to the molecules is that much less than the volume of the container and that's why they subtract that quantity from the volume so here you can see how we now have an adjustment to the volume in case that the gas is very very dense uh, much more dense than typical atmospheric pressure all right next we want to take into account the electrical forces between the molecules and so assume that you have a wall of the container right here let's place a molecule over here and so what's happening in that case the molecules that are stationed right next to the side of a container feel more attractive forces inward due to the presence of all the other molecules there compared to the attractive forces of the container wall itself now again depending upon what the container wall is made out of there may be some adjustments there as well but we just van der Waals just took a simplistic look at this and of course not understanding completely the, attra the attractive forces between different kind of materials and the molecules of the gas but this is a pretty good approximation so let's continue on so we can then say that the force of attraction and let's write that as a, a small f the force of attraction is proportional to the density of the molecules in a container the more dense they are the, for, the stronger the force of attraction the less dense the less the force of attraction we can say that the force of attraction is proportional to the number of molecules in a container divided by the total volume for one mole there we go that's a lot better the force of attraction of a single molecule will be proportional to of course Avogadro's number of molecules divided by the volume now how much for force will be on all of the molecules that are on that side 
Well, we have to multiply that times the number of molecules that are there, and so we can multiply that times the fraction, so the force on the side of, of the container will be proportional to the number of molecules in the whole container divided by the volume times the ratio of the total molecules along the side, and that would, of course, be the ratio of all the molecules divided, uh, multiplied uh, times the area divided by the volume. So that would be N sub A divided by the volume times the area, which means we could say that the force on the entire side is equal to, or proportional to, and let's say here we can say N sub A over the volume squared times the total area. Now, how does that change the pressure? Well, since the pressure is force divided by area, we can say that the pressure against the side is affected, uh, is proportional to the force on the side divided by the area, which is equal to, or yeah, this, we can write N sub A over volume squared times A divided by A. So we take that whole force and divide it by the area, and the areas therefore cancel out, and so that would be the pressure on one side. Now, the pressure, of course, depends upon the actual interaction between the molecules, which depends upon what gas we're dealing with. So now we need to come up with a variable, and so we're going to come up with the variable A that describes, that makes this into an equation that then takes up the value of N over A over the volume squared times, of course, the force, depending upon what gas we're using. So next, we're going to also assume that we may not have a single mole. We may have multiple moles. So that means that the density of the molecules will be increased by a factor of n. So we can then say that the pressure on the side of the container, therefore, is going to be proportional to the force, which depends on the density. So it's going to be n, the number of moles, times Avogadro's number, divided by v, quantity squared, of course the areas cancel out because the pressure term, and I'm going to take the n square out, so the pressure on the side of the container is proportional to n squared times n sub a over v quantity squared. Now, the force of course depends upon the type of molecule we're dealing with, so let's represent another term, a prime, that represents the force between any individual molecule. So um, we can then go ahead and say that the pressure on the side is proportional, or now actually we no longer need to write proportional because now we're actually going to come up with the actual force, depending upon what that constant is. So now this is equal to uh, n squared times a prime n sub a over the volume quantity squared. And rewriting that a little bit, we can say this is equal to n squared times a prime times n sub a quantity squared over the volume squared. And now this quantity right here, they're going to consider that as the variable A right here. So when we do that, this is equal to N squared A over the volume squared, which of course can be written as A times N squared over the volume squared, which is the adjustment term that we have in our Van der Waals equation. Now the question is why the plus? Well, it turns out that that quantity will reduce the actual pressure against the side of the container so that the actual pressure in the, inside the gas is greater by that quantity. So if we measure the pressure through some mechanical device and we check the pressure at the, wall, at the walls of the container, we can then see that the actual pressure inside the container will be greater by this amount, so we have to add the plus. And that then gives us the adjusted equation, the PV equals NRT equation, which is for the ideal gas, is adjusted for a real gas using those two terms. And uh, now you know where that came from. Uh, the only thing you have to realize then, of course, that V is the volume of the container, N is the number of moles, A is the attractive force per molecule multiplied times the number of molecules, and of course that will depend upon each gas, you'll have to look that up on the table. And then here on the volume change, B is simply the volume taken up by each molecule plus the space around it that prohibits another molecule from getting close. And again, that's a constant you'll have to look up in some sort of book, CRC manual or something like that, that'll give you that adjustment factor. So that's how you come up with the Van der Waals equation.